Hi, I'm Bear Claw Billy, and this is Dinner for a Movie. You buy me dinner, I'll watch any movie. Send your request to this email address, and we'll make this happen. Today's dinner comes to us from Asia Gilbert. Asia would like you to check out Blue Moss Arts, and arts and crafts hub. You can find them on Facebook. The link is in the description. And it's Asia's sister, so that's really sweet. Thank you, Asia, for today's dinner, which... I don't know if you can tell how sweaty I am, but I've been making dinner for three hours, give or take. It probably goes faster if you know what you're doing, but I'm actually not much of a cook. Asia sent me all the ingredients for, and the recipe for, uh, well, some delicious rolls, and also this amazing cucumber salad, and this amazing Hungarian mushroom soup, which has to be served in a Star Trek mug per the recipe. I did everything from scratch. I cut all the herbs, which uh, I've never done before. I was chopping things and I was mixing things and I was measuring things and cucumbers and mushrooms and yum, yum, yum. I made my own salad dressing. Seriously, I, I worked hard and now I can't wait to see how it tastes. I feel like a girl with a lot of gifts and that's why today's movie is Rashomon. No, I'm just kidding. It's the girl with the gifts. <laughs> Apparently we got a running gag, I can never get the title right. It's the girl with all the gifts, and from last month it's Forbidden Zone, not The Forbidden Zone. First of all, the food, Mwah, so good. As always, a spoiler-free recommendation right out of the gate. I loved this one. I actually think your best bet is to go in cold. If you're looking for genre, it is sci-fi post-apocalypse, but I think not knowing what is causing it really helps your enjoyment of it. So if your interest is already peaked, I loved this movie, a lot to chew on, like philosophically, highly recommend, go check it out if you wanna think and you wanna get a little creeped out. It's amazing, the girl with all the gifts, check it out. Spoiler time. So now that we're in the spoiler zone, very clever Asia, who presented this to me as a zombie movie and didn't tell me it was also a fungus movie and filled me with mushroom soup. So very good, 10 out of 10 stars Asia, well played. So this is a zombie movie, but it is not your standard zombie movie. I said it in the spoiler free section, but like genuinely, it's pretty neat to not know that going in. I mean, I knew it was a zombie movie going in, but the first 10 minutes still had me guessing, like what is going on here? Like they really set up a mystery. I feel like there's enough mystery in this story that even here in the spoiler section, I don't want to talk about it too much. So The Girl With All The Gifts is about a girl named Melanie. Uh, played by Sania Nanua, and she is amazing, straight off the bat. Her acting, phenomenal. Her character is like strapped to a wheelchair every day, and everyone's all scared of her, and you don't really know why, and then slowly you find out it's because she's a zombie, but we're not using the Z word, so she's a hungry, but she's only half a hungry. This is kind of about, you know, non-binary zombies a bit. No, I don't think that was the full on subtext, but you know, I got that from it, which already sets it apart from some other zombie movies. Full disclosure, I gave up on zombie movies around Zombieland. I was just like, you know what? I'm good. This is played out. There's a reason that the one show I want to watch less than Game of Thrones is The Walking Dead. No amount of money will make me watch The Walking Dead, cut to Gilligan on a bicycle or whatever. But yeah, I, I, the zombie genre, I feel like it's pretty played out. I like, you know, Romero. I, I like some of the things that cropped up around the 2000s. And then I was just like, nah, I'm done with this genre, pack it in. Asia was like, whoa, have I got a zombie movie for you? And yeah, I liked this one. I liked it a lot. And I think what worked about it so well was because there's kind of the same tropes that always come with zombie movies. Zombie movie morality is kind of the same points. Oh, if you get bit, you gotta tell somebody. Oh, they're not the person they once were. You're falling prey to your emotions. That's not the person you once loved. It's not the person you once loved. So it's not classic zombies. It's not a virus, but a fungus. So it's interesting because is the antagonist the zombies or the fungus? Like right out of the gate, it's sort of like, well, what are we fighting? 
Like, are we fighting the people that are infected with the fungus? Are we fighting the fungus itself? Like, that's just one of several moral gray areas that the movie gets into, and that's what keeps it interesting throughout. Gemma Arterton is in it, and I went, yay, Gemma Arterton is in this. Glenn Close is in this, and then I went, whoa, Glenn Close is in this. How did I miss this movie? In 2017, the Glenn Close movie I watched was The Wife. It was also pretty good, but like, I could've been watching zombie fighting Glenn Close. In addition to the moral spins on zombies, there's also a really neat thing about like, these aren't lumbering zombies. They actually stand completely still until they're hungry. That's creepy. You can go undetected by walking slowly, not making any noise, and if you wear a scent blocking gel. By the way, this was a tough one to watch in a pandemic. Like scenes of people like putting on a gel and being like, don't get too close. That made it a little tough to watch. I mean, there's no way they would have known, but yeah, watching it in a pandemic, not necessarily recommended. So the movie does a really good job setting up a spectrum of characters and at various moments, each one seems like a hero and at other moments, each one seems like a villain. And that is done masterfully. Like every so often, it had a Twilight Zone feel to it, where I was like, what's the twist? Is the twist that the villain is actually a hero? Is the twist that the hero is actually a villain? Why am I trying to guess a twist? Maybe there's no twist. It's twisty, it's a twisty story. All throughout it kind of plays with what you're rooting for and who you're rooting for. Really good mystery and really good tension. It's really good at both of those things. Like it has a really good build to it. There's one scene at the end that I felt like was building to some amazing tension and then kind of got derailed, but I don't want to complain too much. It felt like it was building up to something much bigger. I could be wrong, but like, I just got that sense of like, wow, where is this go? Oh, no, oh, okay. The last minute of the movie is really interesting because it feels like a tacked on happy ending, but A, it's a happy ending that was set up. Like once you think back through the movie, you're like, that makes sense. But also it's probably not a happy ending. I don't know, oh. When people talk about ambiguous endings, it's important to note there's a difference between an ambiguous plot point and an ambiguous moral. And I think Girl with the Gifts has a great like just hard ending. The ending plot wise is not ambiguous, but the moral is, oh, um, wow, huh. But also when you think about it, ooh, but uh, <laughs> like, and I like that. I like that a lot. Like it's, it's not a head scratcher of a, the plot didn't make sense. It's a head scratcher of a, how do I feel about this? And that's the kind of head scratcher I can get behind. That was a pretty good ending, but then I remembered I wanted to talk about one more thing, which is the zombie effects are really cool in this movie, and they're so effective because I cannot tell if they are just turning up the film speed, CGI, or just really good actors. There are scenes where, like, kids are chomping, and, like, I genuinely couldn't tell. Like, did they put them through, like, a zombie boot camp? Like, they seem kind of young for that. Uh, it's really good. They do this really creepy, just like... <laughs> Like right now, looking looking at my own face, I don't think I can do it the way they do it. I don't want to end on that, so I will end on this. Only British people can make zombie movies. That's my rule. You've got Romero, and then you've got 28 Days Later, Shaun of the Dead, and The Girl with All the Gifts. Don't make movies about zombies if you're not British. Final word. Thank you so much to Asia Gilbert for a fantastic meal and a fantastic movie. Be sure to check out their sister's art, links in the description. If you'd like to get on dinner for a movie, send a request to this email address. Check out my website, check out my Patreon, and eat some mushrooms. Goodbye, everybody!